Well, as some of you might know, I'm a sucker for a YouTube channel with a good premise. So when Dudley of Yesterzine said, hey, I've got an idea, I was first in the queue. In an attempt to prove retro is not as expensive as everyone thinks it is, he came up with a format for a video. Yes, we'd all have to buy a video game for a pound and then review it. Welcome to Quid Games. He totally didn't come up with the pun first and then work backwards into the format. No, nope, no, nope, didn't happen. So for someone who's quite so enthusiastic for this idea, you might wonder, why the heck did it take you this long to make a video? I mean, lots of other people have got their videos out, right? Yeah, th th there is a reason. Why many people trotted off to CEX just to get their one pound game, I decided to see if I could get one off eBay. Yeah, mistake. So I put a bid in a one pound on the game and I got out of bed. So I put a one pound bid in another game and got out of bed. I did this a few times. And then I realized that at this rate, I was never gonna make a video at all. So I put a number of one pound bids on a number of games and guess what? Yeah, I won all of them. And also a modem I accidentally bid one pound on. Yeah. So while most other videos are entitled Quid Game, mine's Quid Games, cause I got a few games. So let's take a look at a couple of the games I've been on. Now, they're all for the BBC Micro, and there's a reason for that. I have a BBC Micro, and also it's BBC Micro's 40th birthday. Happy birthday, BBC Micro. So, you know, most of my stuff this month, it's just gonna be about the BBC Micro. That might be one of the points of the whole quick game format kind of skips over a little bit. You've gotta have the hardware to run this stuff on, or you've gotta do it via emulation. And even the cheapest retro machine is gonna cost you a bit more than one pound. So I'll point out that you can download BBM for free so you can try these games yourself if you were to buy them. There's also the excellent website, bbcmicro.co.uk. I'll stick a link in the description, which gives you a web-based BBC emulator along with a lot of BBC games you can play, including all the ones I'm gonna cover here. Now all of these games were created by Acorn Soft. They were Acorn's in-house software publishing team. They were also all released in 1982, so these were some of the first games out for the BBC Micro. I know I said that the BBC turned 40 this month, yeah, so the first month really in 1981, yeah, they didn't exactly sell a lot of BBCs. In fact, quite a long way into 1982, there was quite a long waiting list for a BBC, so these were some of the very first games out for the Micro. You could say for many people they were released at basically the same time they got their machine. This is why all of them are basically clones of pre-existing arcade games. So, for example, Missile Base here, well, that's a clone of Missile Command. Monsters is a clone of Alien Panic. And Rocket Raid is a clone of Scramble. And the reason for all these clones is, these are the kind of games that people were familiar with, so if you wanted to sell a system, you needed to have them. You may also have wondered how they thought they'd get away with cloning all these arcade games. Well, I'm gonna quickly cut across to a bit of footage. This is taken from the Acorn Soft reunion that Abug hosted earlier last year, where, well, a number of the developers of these actual games talk about why they thought they could get away with it. I remember lots of discussions with uh, the, the team at Acornsoft and with David Johnson Davis about this sort of thing. And the situation then was, back in 1981-82, it was believed that the law of copyright did not apply to um, computer software in the same way that it is perceived to do today. Um, in particular, that uh, provided you hadn't actually taken a physical copy of the source or object code and uh, derived your work from that, that it was not possible to have intellectual property rights over the resulting game that was the perceived legal advice at the time. But things were changing quite quickly. And the uh, law that was used to protect some of the games was not copyright, but trademark. People started registering the name of the game and or the graphic icons that they'd used within the game as registered trademarks of uh, various corporations. So now we know the how and the why, let's slap on these bad boys in the cassette player and wait, and wait, and make a cup of tea. Yeah, I'd forgotten how long tape software took to load. 
Tapes were slow. I mean, yeah, if you weren't around for this generation, you, yeah, no one else would have the patience to actually wait for one of these anymore. So after having made my tea and drunk my tea, we're ready to play Monsters. And the first thing I'd say is, I think Monsters is actually the weakest of the three games I've got here. I mean, there's definitely some flaws in this implementation of Alien Panic, but yeah, Alien Panic itself, yeah, I didn't enjoy this as much as I enjoyed Scramble or Missile Command. I'll, I'll admit. So let's look at Monsters itself. Now, first off, I'd say, I think I've probably lost my patience for pixel-perfect access to ladders. It is just annoying. I know this was the thing at this point in time, everything seemed to be pixel perfect, but yeah, you have to line up exactly pixel perfect spot on with the ladder or you can't use it. And honestly, I'm on the ladder, I'm pressing up, just go up the ladder. That frustration aside, yeah, the game's a pretty reasonable implementation of Alien Panic. I mean, it's about as fun as Alien Panic was. I mean, there is the odd additional flaw. When you end up with too many monsters on the screen at once, the game starts to slow down, which really does impact the gameplay later on. Now, I suppose we've got to pick, keep in mind at this point in time, the developer Tim, yeah, he'd not had access to a BBC for very long at this point in time. So, you know, coding techniques certainly came on a lot as the platform developed. We're within the first year of the machine here. So, sprites slow down with too many sprites. Yeah, it's, it's to be expected. Those flaws aside, though, my main issue with this game is I don't particularly enjoy the gameplay itself, which, you know, it's not really the fault of the developer or Aconsoft because they're cloning a game, effectively, and the game they cloned, yeah, I didn't like the gameplay to that either, particularly. Essentially, you go up and down ladders, you have to dig a hole for the alien, wait for the alien to step into it, fill the hole in. It's just... I don't know, I just find it somehow unsatisfying. I guess, I think I just like the shoot the alien, alien dead kind of gameplay. Speaking of just shoot the alien, let's move on to Rocket Raid. So what you've got here is from a left to right kind of shooter. It goes along horizontally, you have to shoot the things in the air, avoid the various missiles and other objects, and also blow up things with bombs too. Particularly, you need to blow up the little fuel pods because that helps fuel your ship so you don't just run out of fuel and die. As a kid, I loved Rocket Raid. I mean, I played this quite a lot. You wouldn't know by looking at me playing it now. Apparently, I am not very good at this anymore. I dare say a few more hours practice and I'd improve, but yeah, I, I don't have the level of skill I once had with this. Now, to me, this game is just pure shooty fun. It's about the right level of challenge, and it does get more difficult as time goes on. You've always got the ticking away fuel bar, adding a little bit more pressure to bomb some more fuel reserves. Although, blowing up fuel depots to get fuel does seem maybe a little counterintuitive. I'm pretty sure that's not how it works in real life. Now, in theory, you can make the ship go backwards. I don't mean that the whole window will shift back to the left. I mean, you can move it forwards and backwards in the play space. It is sort of continually still going to the right all the time. Now, I say in theory because, yeah, there's a key that does it. It's just the key layout is a bit awkward. I mean, actually, quite a lot awkward. Particularly if you want to do shooting and bombing and going up and down. Yeah, then getting onto the reverse button, it's, that's, that's actually quite tricky. Um, I don't think I managed to successfully do it once whilst recording the footage. I'd say the main thing for this game is it's fun. You want to play it and play it again just to get better and further along it. And yeah, the difficulty, it starts to move up quite quickly, particularly when you start getting into sections where there's a roof, so you don't actually have to just avoid the ground. You have to avoid the ceiling as well, whilst also shooting and bombing stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's not the easiest of games. Apparently some people can speed run this and well, well done them. Um, I am not someone who can do that. Right, let's get on to a missile base. Now, I'd say graphically, this is a bit less impressive than Rocket Raid. But also, you don't really care. You honestly don't have time to spend looking at the graphics of what the stuff on the ground is. Those little, I think they're supposed to be houses or city blocks. Yeah, whatever they're supposed to be. You don't have time to be looking at them, so it doesn't really matter that they don't look that great. You're too busy with the things falling from the sky. The gameplay from Missile Base is great because it's, you know, gameplay from Missile Command. And essentially, you've got objects falling from the sky and you control a missile battery. And you move a cursor around and then you fire your missile to where that cursor is. The missile explodes on that point, making a circle. 
If the line of the object falling from the sky intersects with the circle, well, that's it, you've stopped that falling object in the blast. Now, that may sound ludicrously simple as a game principle, and, and it is, but my goodness, this is a lot of fun. It gets fast and it gets frenetic very quickly trying to intercept all those inbound streams. And this is where the control scheme becomes a bit of a problem for this game. Yeah, in the arcade original, you had a rollerball, so moving that cursor around, which is where the missiles head to, yeah, that was pretty easy. A BBC doesn't have a trackable, or at least it certainly didn't at this point in time, so they had to implement this with the keyboard. And yeah, that control scheme does not feel super intuitive. Yeah, you'll see in the gameplay a number of times that I've captured that the cursor doesn't move for a little while when it probably should be doing. And that's because I'm pressing the wrong key. Yes, my hand has slipped slightly off the key position and my finger's currently doing nothing. By the time I realize that and get it look at the keyboard and get it back to the right position, it's kind of too late to have moved. Now, admittedly, with practice, I got better. The muscle memory got better. I slipped off the keys less often, but I still slipped off the keys. There's a lot of keys you need to control. You've got nine direction keys, plus three firing keys for the various missile batteries. That's, that's a lot of keys. Now, most of the graphical changes for these games is just well, a simple palette swap, basically. Um, they reuse the same graphics quite a lot. And as each level goes on, you get palette changes, and you get slightly more objects falling from the sky, but also a slightly different variety of object as well. I honestly think I would have kept playing this game for hours long if it had not been for the whole key thing, which eventually just tipped me over the edge of frustration to just, no, no, I'm done, I'm, I'm, I'm getting tea. So having now finally got my cup of tea and sat down, I've had a bit of a chance to think about all of these games together. Out of the three, Rocket Raid is probably the most technically impressive. Given it's one of the earliest games created for the BBC, it really does move. There's an awful lot happening on screen at once, and it manages to do it all smoothly and at such a fast pace. Monsters, to be honest, is probably the weakest, and it's not just that I'm not that into that style of gameplay. It just has a lot of things that I find annoying these days, like the whole pixel perfect thing, but also it does move relatively slowly, and it does struggle when you get more than a few monsters on the screen at once as well. Missile Base is probably the one I enjoy the most, but that's because I really love Missile Command and that style of gameplay. I just really enjoyed it. The only thing that lets it down is its control scheme. Um, if I had a tracker ball with that thing, oh, that'd be a whole different story. But no, sadly, the game never was updated to support Acorn's tracker ball. Yes, I, I do actually have a tracker ball for a BBC. Just, yeah, this game doesn't support it. I suppose we should go back to the format of the video to begin with. We bought all of these for a pound. Did we get a pound's worth of enjoyment out of each one? Yeah, no, we did. Even Monsters is worth a quid. I think what this video shows, and in fact, quite a lot of the videos that have gone around, is that there's a lot of bargains to be had in the world of retro. You know, if you've got a quid, you can get a lot of fun. And also a modem. You, you, you can buy a modem for a quid. Who, who knew that that would be a thing? Yeah, maybe I should get him to start a whole quid hardware thing. Well, I think that just about brings us to the end. I'd like to say thank you very much for watching, and also that no South Koreans were harmed in the making of this video. As ever, I'll do that universal reminder for like, share, subscribe, do hideous things to bells.